Hello, this is Kevin Kohler with Dare to Believe Ministries. Today I am with John Barrett, a good friend of mine. John and his precious wife Sue and Jonathan have been friends of our family for 20 about years. 20 years yeah. now. Yeah. And it's been a real privilege to get to know him and his family. He's an awesome man of God. And we're just so privileged to have you here. And, and just to get to share the Amen. Word of God with each other, and to talk about Jesus. Yeah, what a joy. It is. So why don't you share with our Dare to Believe viewers, just share a little bit about yourself and your background and, and your family. Okay. All right. Before I do that, as I was driving over here, the Lord spoke to me about something, and I just wanted to share that with you quickly. If you're married, stay married. Amen. You know, I've been married to my wife for 42 years on July 10th. And it's very important that we as believers hold on to that truth. You know, if you are seduced by the Jezebel spirit, get over it. You know, quit it. Because God has created a way for all of us to be faithful. And if you have fallen, if you have committed adultery or something else like that, God has also created a path from adultery to forgiveness. That's a wide path. Unfortunately, a lot of people need to walk that path. But it's a path you walk with a lot of people because we don't know how wide our infidelity reaches. And you work that through, and eventually the path becomes a smaller path, and it's just a few people helping you get there. And then it's just a, the narrow path, like Jesus was talking about with you and your husband, making it through, and eventually it becomes just you making your way to that forgiveness that God has because it's there for you but sometimes we have to work at it so I just want to encourage you I don't know who this was for but there's somebody or some buddies out there that need to know you can make it you can do it we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us amen amen now you asked me to share something about myself uh, my wife and I have been in ministry for 48 years Wow. It's, awesome. it's been it's been a joy uh, I actually have been in the ministry for 48 years she joined me you know later on about five years six years into it but it's been a joy to work through all the things and see the things that God's done uh, we have I, I received Christ when I was back in 1967 so you know I'm old <laughs> when I was a kid I had a friend who took his 13 year old friend who had uh, just been through his parents divorcing and he took me to a Billy Graham film and at the end of the film this gigantic Billy Graham standing on the screen and he's reaching his hands out and he says if you're with friends they'll wait well I just thought to myself <laughs> if I'm with friends I, they're here I can't go and then I sat there for a little while longer and I thought to myself it's too late and it's I, it was like Billy Graham was reading my mind and he says it's never too late today is a day of salvation sure. so I went to, and I received the Lord and about two years later, I received a call to ministry. And uh, since then, God has just moved and worked. And we've seen miracles. We've seen things that uh, it take for all day. I mean, we'd, we'd have to do multiple shoots to just talk about the wonderful things God has done. Uh, today, I believe God is starting a new thing. And he is working a new thing in our life. And I'm just so excited to be able to be a part of what he's doing. So tell us, John, what, what are you doing today? What's the Lord doing in your life and in your ministry today? God has opened up a tremendous opportunity for us to start John Barrett Ministries awesome. and Hello Ministry Services. My wife and I have been praying and praying and praying about this for years. Uh, and he began to give us words back in, I think the first word I received was in 2009 mm -hmm. about stepping out and doing my own thing. I've always been an associate pastor. I've always been the one called alongside to help. Sure. And uh, I remember in 2014, he said, your time for serving others has come to an end. And just like uh, Laban uh, had Jacob there uh, for all those years to serve, Finally, it's time now for you to take your own sheep sure. and be be caring for the, those sheep. And and we've had this heart for years because the, the the Lord wants fully devoted followers of Christ, and and Amen. it's a place where the church is falling down, and that's where we want to come alongside and help churches 
to find that path that drives them to develop fully devoted followers of Christ. And that sounds awesome. And is there a scripture that, that you use that really drives your vision and, and, and yes. fuels your passion? Yes. I, my pastor, when I, when I got baptized, we all got to pick a favorite song, a favorite verse, and uh, light a candle to you know tell a story of what we did. And my favorite verse was kind of been my life verse. It's the one that stuck with me. It's from Matthew. It's uh, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And, and I, I never knew all those years ago when I chose that verse, how much it was going to impact me and the condition the church would be in today. I mean, today there are a lot of pulpits that are preaching lawlessness. They are preaching nothing of the word, everything of human uh, secular life. And, and, and it's opened the door for those things to enter into the church in ways that I never would have thought of even back then. And so I, I, I have always wanted to let people know all through my ministry that there is a deeper walk with Jesus. There's, there's so much more to uh, getting more than hell insurance. You know, just getting saved, making an emotional decision. Uh, so many people uh, believe with their minds right. and they get that. And so many people believe that they're saved because they've made a mental ascent. And then there's people who have... Uh, had an emotional decision uh, they've been manipulated i like to say into coming forward because it's so important that people make that but you know god jesus never said that's our responsibility he said go and make disciples he didn't say go get people saved he said go and make disciples and we're not doing that we think it's our responsibility to notch our belts with people that get saved. And that's one of the things that churches are, are using as, are you successful or are you not successful? Uh, how many people come forward during your services during the year? You know, rather than how many people are out there sharing their faith with other people and bringing them in uh, and making disciples. It's not just a numbers game. Exactly. Numbers are only numbers. You give numbers to bean counters. <laughs> You'd always think the numbers that that matter that are really influential are the the people that are actually that get saved and and do as you say they become disciples of jesus they have that personal relationship with him right not just uh well i've got saved and now i've met my spiritual duty or whatever and then nothing ever changes in their lives and, and then they wonder what what's going on here why why can't things get better but but you're talking about personal relationship that's right and that's what it is the, the important part is relationship. It's all about Jesus. You know, we okay. go through trials. You know, we, we may have fight, faced mountains of desperation. Uh, we may have climbed them. We may have fought. We may have won battles. We may have won victories. But sometimes the sorrow that comes breaks more than just your heart. And you can recite verse after verse after verse after verse, and it's just not enough. When answers aren't enough, there's Jesus. Right. Jesus is more than just the answer to our prayers. He is where we find a safe, a peaceful refuge from the trials and tribulations of life. And if we don't have that uh, personal life-changing experience, relationship, as you said, with Jesus, we are going to find ourselves turning to secular means to satisfy those needs. Do you think, John, that that a lot of people they if the, when they get saved they think they they make God their big pie in the sky type God that hey I Absolutely. want this I want 
this, I want this, I want this. And, and, and they don't serve him for who he is, but serve him for what he gives them or what he can do for them. Absolutely. And, and we talked about this before. I believe in prosperity. I believe God wants us to prosper. Certainly. His word says, you know, that he wants us to prosper and be in health. Sure. You know, he's not going to say that if that's not what he wants. But so much of the prosperity gospel is talking about money and secular things. They're not talking about as your spirit, as your soul prospers. Yes. You know, they they kind of leave that to the side. They want it to be all about you prosper. And if you send me your money, yes. <laughs> then we're all going to prosper together because you're being faithful. And, and I I just don't believe that it's about that relationship. It's where you find the, the personal value in Christ and what he's done for you. If, if we don't do that, then I think we have adulterated our spirituality. And when we find ourselves in trouble, we don't have him to turn to. Because right, we, we don't know him. That's right. I'm reminded of the scripture in Genesis 15, verse 1 of Abraham. Uh -huh. yeah. Abraham had just returned from the, the, the victory over the kings, and, and the kings wanted to reward him with wealth and, and money. And he says, I'll take nothing because I'll have no one say that I made Abraham rich. And then yeah. God, in, in chapter 15, verse 1, he comes out and he, <laughs> and he says, Abram, do not be afraid. I am your shield. Right. I am your exceedingly great reward. God is his, was his reward. God is our reward today. Jesus Amen. is our reward. And we don't fathom and recognize what that means. Amen. That's right. He, uh, one of the favorite songs that they teach all of the children in Israel, it's part of their, I guess we'd call it catechism, is Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pest. It goes on to talk about all the different things he will do. And I like to look at it like the Lord telling men, hey, guess what? I am sitting up here at the top of this mountain. And Satan, you can try to climb that mountain. As a matter of fact, you can get as high to the mountain as you can, but I've got so many nukes <laughs> that I haven't even used on you down there while you're trying to climb up that you can't even get here. And you know what? I've got my child right up here with me at the oh, top of this awesome. mountain, and the, you cannot get to them because awesome. I'm their shelter. I'm their power. I'm their salvation. I am the most high God. That's right. It, it's it's knowing who our God is. I've listened to Melanie minister so many times, and her main core message is, who is your God? Knowing who your God Amen. is. Yes. And yes. then knowing who we are in him. Yeah, yeah. And the enemy likes to pervert that. He likes to scramble our brains and get us thinking that it's it's all these things that, that reflects that God loves us, when in fact, it's his word tells us. He loves us, and he loves us. That is so Un true. Unconditionally. I'm absolutely, sorry. absolutely. Uh, Sue had the privilege of uh, singing with Lauren Harris one time. She won a contest, uh, and she got uh -huh. to sing, I've Just Seen Jesus with him. And I remember the joy that we all felt when they talked, when the first time they said, I've just seen Jesus. If people can get a hold of the fact that they can, they can see Jesus. They can have that personal relationship, and it's unconditional. Yeah. You know, you don't have to work to earn it. You don't have to work to keep it. Uh -huh. It's just an unconditional thing that they have. And, and I, I, it's a joy to me uh, to be able to share that with other people. What Melanie does, what you guys do in Dare to Believe Ministries, reaching out and helping people come to know Jesus and come to a real personal relationship with Jesus, not the fake stuff, but the real person. That's what our ministry is designed to help. Yes. You know, uh, I came to, to salvation through Billy Graham and his ministry. Billy Graham is one of the few who really follows up on his people. Mm -hmm. And he sent me some material within weeks of getting saved. Sure. And I went through that material and I can tell you, 
if I hadn't gone through the material and if they hadn't kept sending me notes, they sent me every week, they sent me a note encouraging me and asking me if I'd done that week's Bible study. And it was exciting because somebody cared about me. Sure. And I think that's what I really do. I know you guys, I've known you for a long time. That's what Dare to Believe Ministries does too. They reach out and they care about the people that they're, they're ministering to, that you're ministering to. Amen. You know, you want the people to uh, know the Word of God. That's why you do your your blogs, uh, your video blogs on, uh, or they call them vlogs now, I guess, <laughs> on on uh, the internet, because people need to know the Word. Yes. And they need to know, need to know it from a man of God like you, uh, or a woman of God like Melanie. They need to know that there is someone out there who will follow up, who will who will love them enough to care enough to help them be who they should be in Christ. And and, and I, I feel like in, in the church today that more and more people are getting away from the word, kind of depending, depending upon the pastor yes. to be their source of, of word knowledge and Bible knowledge when it's so critical for us as individuals. God, back to your original point of your scripture, is it it's all God wants personal relationship with us. Right. He has given us his word so that we can get to know him and know how he knows us. Uh, how can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. That is how you stay pure. It's uh, Psalm 119.9. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. I started to recite it in, in King James, but I've forgotten my King James because I don't <laughs> use it anymore. <laughs> That's a terrible thing, but it's true. Uh, but it, it is the word. You have to be in the word. The word is power. Uh, it is powerful, but is also power. It's the power that gives us the ability to live the resurrection life. I don't know if you've ever read Watchman Nee. He, he talks in Sit, Walk, Stand about the word and the power that you have of being a Christian, but you have to live that resurrection life. You have to be in Christ to do it. Yes. Uh, and we don't realize that we are, uh, the pastors are not teaching that we are the righteousness of God in Christ once we become that new creation. And that because of that, we have the power to live that resurrection life. Exactly. And, and you know, again, if we just get saved, nothing ever, and, and we never really have that real heart change and, and that real desire yeah. to live for God and to and, and to get into his word and know him and obey him you know when 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 the trials and the tribulations come and they will mm -hmm. they will come Amen. It, it's easy to crumble but the word of God is our is our foundation we can build on that it's true it's powerful it's quicker it's sharper than any two-edged sword piercing yes. even to the dividing asunder between soul and spirit and the joints of the marrow it's a discerner of the, the thoughts and the intents of the heart Amen. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. It's, it's powerful. That's and, right. and, and, and Melanie and I believe that, that all the answers that we need in life, they're in the Word of God. Yeah. Now, I agree. You may have to dig for it, but certainly have to study it out. Dig. Holy Spirit will guide you. Praise God. Help you. Holy Spirit. So important. He's not the forgotten part of the Trinity. He is a vital part. He is the one that teaches us. You know, that, there are so many times I have to remind people there is a third part. Yes. You know, because all they want to talk about is God and Jesus. And they forget the Holy Spirit is there and He is part of your life. And when He's there and He's part of your life, He will teach you from the Word. Yes. I mean, things will pop out. Things will make sense that never made sense before. But... We have to go through things, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. And then maybe that test will make another scripture pop out to you sure. that didn't even stand out before. Uh, one of the things that uh, Andre Crouch said at the best, if heaven never was promised to me, it's been worth just having the Lord in my life. Yes. You know, but we have heaven promised to us, praise God. It's not just the Lord in my life, which is enough, you know. Right. But we do have all these other promises. And God, this word is full 
of promises. Yes. There are promises, and you know what? God keeps every one of them. Yep. He's not uh, precocious. He keeps his promises. You know, First um, uh, Peter, he talks about, uh, he, he's given us these great and precious promises, uh, and by them we escape lust. Yeah. The, cor the corruption that is in this world through lust. And we need to remember that he's given us those. Yes. And he's going to keep them. Why? Because he wants us to live holy lives. And that gets me back to the whole thing in our scripture that we talked about. If we're not in the word, if we're not in a real personal relationship with Jesus Christ, we are performing lawlessness. We could be out there and in our own strength, we could make it look like we performed a miracle. We can make it look like we've cast out demons. We, I mean, the devil's more than happy to make a charlatan look good. Yes, he really is, but he's going to do everything he can to make a sincere person look bad. And that's where I think there are people who have a head knowledge of Christ or who've made an emotional decision and, and think they're going to get there are going to be sorely, sorely losers. <laughs> it all comes down to the end. And, and we cannot do it on our own strength. Yeah. Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, he says, without me... You can do Amen. nothing. That's right. And, and you know, how much is nothing, John? <laughs> is it, is, That's like all, you know. Nothing. <laughs> it's Without all. me, ye can do <laughs> nothing. nothing. Yeah. Well, John, it's awesome. God's showing you a lot of things. I know he's doing a great thing in your life through your ministry that's expanding Amen. the kingdom of heaven because God's word is expanding in this world even today. Why don't you pray for the people for us? I would love to do that. Father, I thank you so much for what you are doing and what you have ordained for this you, ministry. Jesus. And uh, first, I just want to pray for Dare to Believe. And I thank you, Lord, that uh, you they are doing Lord. what you have called them to do. And I pray power upon them. Then, Lord, I also pray for those who are pray listening to today, who are watching. Yes, Father, real relationship with Jesus. I pray that they will understand that it's not just head knowledge. It's not just an emotional decision, but it's really knowing Jesus Christ. And Father, for anyone who may be in that position of head knowledge or a emotional decision, I pray that even now they would say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life and and become real. I want a relationship yes. with you. And Father, I pray that they will become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ, that they will get into the Word, and if they need help, that they will contact Dare to Believe Ministry, that they will, they will come to understand that these are people who care about them. Father, I pray that uh, you will work in this world the powerful work that you have already set in motion. Lord, we know that the end is near. We know that the time is coming to an end and there are so many who don't know you. And I pray for those, Father, that they will too come to know you in a real and personal way. And I thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John, that's awesome. Go ahead and tell the people how that they can contact you in your ministry for if, if, if they have ministry opportunities or worship opportunities, how can people get in touch with you? Great. Uh, you can go to our website. It's uh, jsjbmi.alberlyn.com. Uh, and you can look there. We have our information up there. If you need us to come out and uh, do a needs assessment for your church and maybe figure out what we can do to help you grow in the Lord, make more fully devoted followers of Christ. If you'd like Sue and I to come out and sing for you, if you want us to come be an interim pastor, lead worship, whatever you need, just give us a call and God uh, will, will make it happen. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. John, thank you for the, the time just to share your heart oh, today. Oh, thank you. This has been a joy. It, it's been wonderful. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Share this video if you, if you like it, because I know it's going to help people. But we just want to encourage you. Dare to believe that the Word of God is true. Our Amen. God is faithful and true, and He Amen. wants a personal relationship with you. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Jesus is Lord. Amen.